Guten Morgen, für mich geht es jetzt in die Niederlande. Ich schaue gerade auf den Tesla, es ist 3.12 Uhr. Jetzt geht es erstmal nach Nürnberg zum Flughafen und dann ja nach Amsterdam. Dort wartet dann hoffentlich schon äh, Jerry von Bulls und holt mich ab. Und dann ja bin ich erstmal heute Samstag im Hotel, ein bisschen was arbeiten, vielleicht auch Amsterdam erkunden oder Bulls erkunden. Mal schauen, ich bin gespannt. Und dann ja steht morgen und übermorgen dann das Event an und dann geht es am Dienstag zurück für mich. Und deswegen ja machen wir uns jetzt erstmal auf den Weg zum Flughafen. So, für mich geht es jetzt am Flughafen, in, besser gesagt vom Parkhaus in den Flughafen. Fahrt war entspannt, ähm, ist natürlich nachts um, keine Ahnung, wie spät haben wir es jetzt, kurz vor äh, halb, vier, halb fünf, gar nicht mal so viel los hier. Und ja, jetzt einchecken, ist erledigt, also ab durch die Sicherheitskontrolle zum Gate, dann wahrscheinlich erst noch mal in den Lounge verziehen, ein bisschen entspannen noch, bevor dann der Flug mit KLM hier nach Amsterdam geht. Und dann, ja, jetzt steht schon der erste Tag meiner Reise an. Ich habe natürlich alles dabei, was Koffer angeht, was äh, Kamera-Equipment und Co. angeht. Von daher, ich bin gespannt, wie das Ganze jetzt läuft. Ich glaube, ich melde mich gleich nochmal vom Gate. Und ja, dann nehmen wir jetzt erstmal den Fahrstuhl nach unten. So, ich bin jetzt gerade in Amsterdam angekommen. Meine Abholung ist noch nicht hier. Ich bin mal gespannt, wann ich gleich Jerry oder einen von seinen Mitarbeitern sehe. Ähm, Flug war echt entspannt. Ähm, wir hatten eine leichte Verzögerung wegen dem Gepäckstück von einem Passagier, der nicht dabei war. So, jetzt ist es ähm, dreiviertel acht. Ich bin in Amsterdam und jetzt mal schauen, was der Tag heute bringt. Ist natürlich wieder typisch. Deutschland, Sonnenschein pur. Ich bin in Irland, habe keine Jacke mitgenommen, weil das Wetter hier normalerweise fantastisch ist. Und natürlich regnet es heute in Amsterdam. Also ich bin sehr gespannt, was jetzt der Tag heute so bringt. Und morgen dann erster Teil Michael Smith, Montag zweiter Teil Michael Smith. Und Dienstagabend geht es dann wieder zurück. Wir werden auch Schott kennenlernen. Wir werden eine Führung bei ähm, Embassy, also bei Bulls Holland bekommen. Wir ähm, werden auch einige Projekte in eigener Absicht besprechen. Und dann ja, wird es auf jeden Fall ein cooler Trip. Ähm, Dobby ist daheim versorgt. Äh, Anna müsste dann auch aus dem Urlaub wiederkommen, wenn ich zurückkomme. Marcel hält dabei die Stellung daheim oder besser gesagt in der Firma. Von daher wird es auf jeden Fall spannend. Wir hatten gestern noch einen coolen Abend zusammen. Wir waren noch was essen mit Peter, dem Chef von Schott und Jerry und seinen Kollegen. War ein richtig cooler Abend. Ja, jetzt heute erstmal ein bisschen ausgeschlafen und jetzt geht es dann gleich los zum Headquarter von Bulls. Und dann ist heute der erste Part des Events. Michael Smith spielt ja aktuell noch in Trier, da hat er gestern gewonnen. Hat einen ersten starken Auftritt mit seinen neuen Darts gehabt. Und das haben wir natürlich dann auch live verfolgt in der Bar, wo wir waren. Und war ein richtig cooles Event, geile Doppelquote, hat er gut gespielt. Ja, jetzt geht's ins Headquarter und wir sehen die Produkte heute zum ersten Mal live. Da fällt auch schon das Notebook runter, beziehungsweise der Rucksack. Ähm, ja, wir sehen die Produkte heute live. Vielleicht werde ich nochmal Mengen nachjustieren, nochmal nach oben. Ähm, wir werden noch andere Partner äh, kennenlernen und treffen und kriegen natürlich nochmal eine Führung durch das neue Headquarter von Bulls. Mal schauen, wer noch alles vor Ort ist. Ist natürlich auch immer wieder cool, die ganzen Leute ähm, zu treffen, mit denen man sonst das ganze Jahr über E-Mail e oder Telefonkontakt hat. Genau. Das ist übrigens auch nur, ich glaube, sechs Minuten, hat Jerry gestern gesagt von hier. Also es ist wirklich ein kurzer Trip und ja, mal schauen, was ich euch da heute so ein bisschen zeigen kann. So, ich bin hier gerade im Lager von äh, Bulls und Shot entsprechend. Jerry gibt uns gerade hier eine Führung, was hier alles passiert und wie das alles funktioniert. Und ihr seht schon, unglaublich viele Produkte sind hier und ja, ist total cool. Ich habe auch schon neuen Michael Smith Darts gesehen und auch andere Sachen, die demnächst rauskommen werden. Hier bin ich jetzt gerade in der äh, Unicorn-Ecke unterwegs beispielsweise. Und jetzt schauen wir uns zum Beispiel mal Robson an. Also hier, das ist alles Robson, was wir hier haben mit allen möglichen Variationen. Und ja, ist total verrückt, das alles wieder so zu live zu sehen. Hier sehe ich jetzt zum Beispiel gerade das Target-Regal. Haben sie natürlich auch, auch wenn wir das natürlich direkt beziehen. Und ja, es ist mega cool, mal zu sehen, wie andere Firmen arbeiten und wie das Ganze bei denen abläuft, etc. Und ich hoffe, ich kann euch noch ein bisschen ein paar Einblicke mitnehmen. Ich habe ein paar Shots gemacht, wie das Ganze hier aussieht. Hier auch ganz viele äh, Tacoma Wallets und so ein Spaß, also mega cool. Und hier beispielsweise, da wird das Ganze durch gepackt. Also hier werden dann Bestellungen für uns verpackt. Und hier im hinteren Bereich, also ungefähr so da, sind dann die ganzen großen Items, also die ganzen. Ähm, Boards und äh, Surrounds und solche Geschichten. Also ja, so sieht es hier bei Boys in Holland aus.
Ja, die vorher bei Bulls im anderen Lager war, haben wir jetzt auch wieder hier. Und ja, Golf-Dartboard, ganz klassisch, gibt es übrigens auch bei uns im Shop. Und auch viele ältere Dartboards, Design-Dartboards, wie jetzt zum Beispiel hier oder in dem bestimmten Design. Hier ein ganz, ganz spezielles Board mit doppelten Triple- und Doppelfeldern, habe ich so auch noch nicht gesehen. Da oben haben wir dann das Golf-Dartboard, das andere war natürlich das Nuka-Dartboard. Und natürlich eine riesige Auswahl, also auch spezielle Boards wie... Zum Beispiel das hier, das kennt auch nicht jeder. Und dann haben wir auch nochmal so ein doppeltes, hier das goldene 50 Years Dartboard. Und ja, hier geht es dann natürlich genauso weiter in den verschiedensten Sachen. Hier sogar grün, Apple, interessant, interessant. Ja, und so geht es dann hier auch weiter die ganze Zeit. Die verschiedensten Dartboards, das ist auch cool. Das sieht aus wie ein Steel Dartboard. Als Soft hat gemacht. Das ist cool. What is made out of uh, horse hair? That's in, in Holland a typical fairy tale. No, it's not. It's a plant-based material. And what you see here is basically uh, the anatomy of a dartboard. So what they do is they take a, a sizable plant, they dry the leaves, and the leaves have very long nerves. So when the leaf is dried, the nerves stay over, and, and that's basically what you see here. So that's packed together. And then it's sliced in, uh, they call it biscuits. So all the biscuits are glued on a wooden plate. You can see all the lines here, which is basically uh, the biscuits itself. So uh, the biscuits are held together by either tape or paper. And this is also one of the things that define the quality of a dartboard. For example, if you want to do it a uh, cheap way, you put tape on it. If you want to do it the proper way, so the more expensive way, use a special kind of paper to put around it. I mean, for example, uh, all banded boards, so the shot boards, but also our goose boards who are manufactured under uh, lines with shot, we use the best material. That means you don't have any hard corners where the biscuits touch each other. There's also with, um, when you have cheaper boards, you can see there's a lot of glue here and that um, causes every now and then a, a bouncer and then people on TV go like, how is it possible? It was not even close to the wire. Instantly you will know there was a hard spot of the glue. And the top quality boards, they define themselves by using the right material, the right tape, etc. So once the biscuits are glued to uh, the plate, they are cut off so you have a smooth surface. After that the screen goes on and they print the black uh, for the segments, the red for the uh, triples and the doubles and then the logos are attached. Or ba basically the logos are attached in the, uh, basically in the black screen because it's spared out uh, in the screen. So, and then last but not least they will put in the spider and that's a very special process that uh, I'm really proud to say that, that uh, Peter's father invented that system. He was the very first to implement the spider in a dartboard. Later it has been copied by several other customers and uh, even more later it became a sort of the standard for a good board. And before that, uh, what you can see here, you had tri-wire boards and I think the first was, you find it here, it's a round wire board with clips and before that you had also a, a bull with two staples and I think around 30 years ago the staple free bullseye was introduced and back then that was a huge huge innovation back then but the market has moved forward and I think at the moment it's uh, so much better uh, than what was sold back then
I'm going to introduce them anyway, as you know who they are, but I'm still going to say, I've done a little bit of digging. Let's see how good Michael knows his own history, eh? <laughs> see, by the look on his face, you know he didn't know this. All right, Michael, you've played 1955 official matches. You didn't know that, I know that. <laughs> I'm not going to ask you. You won almost 1,300 of them, but that's a good percentage. Good yeah! <laughs> Do you know when your first official registered match was? International match? Uh, it was at the World Masters. Masters? Yes. As a boy. Uh, Ian White? No, you were as a boy in the Boys Masters. You played oh. Timo Haru from Finland. Yeah, yeah, now I mean. I got beaten in the final for the last show on Bifus. See, he yeah. remembers yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I was walking, that was in Wellington, no? And when I was walking to the venue, someone hit pockets me and took me down to my pocket. So I had to buy a new set of, I bought Gary Anderson and Dream Boys from Day to Day, I think. Played really well, got to the final, then my dad drove up the day after for the final, brought me a set of my own darts, and then I got battered in the final. So I should have, and then after that, then I changed back to the Dream Boys and I played with them until the Worlds 2014, I think. So the big question then is, was that the last set you ever bought yourself? Uh, them guys I didn't buy, I swapped. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, my mate bought me the Dream Boys for the first round, and then I went back to the old ones, and then I swapped the old ones back for the Dream Boys. So, I, yeah, I've never actually bought a set of my dads myself. See, that's a typical dog <laughs> player for you. Never buys his own dogs, <laughs> yeah, yeah. too. Um, obviously, as we know him uh, now, he is the reigning world champion. He is the ranked number one in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, give him a round of applause. Michael Smith! Get a little back and forth here as well. Then the man sitting next to him. Uh, in 1970, uh, Puma in New Zealand was born. Uh, the father of Peter, because we've got Peter McCormack here. The father, John McCormack, was the man who founded the company. And John came to the Netherlands about 20 years later, we think, roughly. Uh, and found a partner here in Embassy Benelux, Bulls NL. Uh, and they worked together ever since. Growing and growing. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, okay, that's correct. And uh, at least I've got my facts straight. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please be together together from New Zealand, Peter Devore. <laughs> and Peter, because I'm going to start with you, um, this must be one of the biggest days in the history of shot darts, isn't it? Yeah, it's uh, by far the most exciting day we've had in 50 years. 50 years, look at that, that's a long time. Um, it's, it's difficult um, to see the, to the progress we know. You come from a little town in New Zealand, because it's really a little town where you're, uh, where you're from, isn't it? Yeah, there's less than 5,000 people. So they all work for you, basically. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> well, they all know us anyway. Yeah, exactly. Um, you progress through the years. What made you, at a certain point, realize now we need a caliber player like Michael Smith to sign for us. Well, for us to, to become truly global, we had to get um, that profile player, especially for the UK market and for over here. In the US, it's not so player driven, but over this part of the world, it's vital. So it was something we needed to do. So we set out on that journey. Um, realistically, four years ago, we decided we wanted to start searching for a player. And then got pretty serious about it uh, just on two years ago when young Joey got involved and gave him the task of finding us a player. So off he went. And in the end, does this need translation for the Dutch people, by the way? Or are we okay? We're okay? Good. That makes my life half as easy. Always good. In the end, the journey comes to Michael Smith. Michael, how did you get in touch with Sean? Uh, I never. Um the manager Mark, he said, there's a company who wants to talk to you, we've got to chat and see where it goes. And that was literally two years ago, I still had, I think, two and a half years left with uh, Unicorn. And I was like, you know what, it can't hurt to talk to someone. And literally 10 minutes into a Zoom call, I was virtually a shot player. It didn't take long, his, his passion and his drive for what he wanted and where he wanted his company to be was matching my passion and drive to where I wanted to be. Back then when we were first talking, I think I was ranked number nine in the world, I think. I just got back in the Premier League and I'd lost two World Finals. No, I only won when we first started. I'd lost so many majors and 
it was that thing he's passionate for. It's going to give me that next step. It's going to give me that five percent. And lucky enough, I went on to win the world. But even you see with the darts, it's something that we've designed and worked on for nearly two years. It's a perfect thing for my floor. Here's the board right, and yeah, all passions just met, and it, it didn't clash. It just it's going to take us forward. It must be, even though the click was there from the get go, it must be difficult to change manufacturers. You know as well as I do that if you look around you, all the players, it doesn't always work well. What makes you convinced this will work well? Uh, you know, I thought of Van Gogh, even though he's not playing <coughs> his greatest stuff than he was, he's still winning major tournaments. I've been playing great darts for 10 years and I've only won two. So, <laughs> so it, 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 it'll work, I'll make sure it works. I have the right mentality to work, I have the right team now, perfect team behind me. If something was wrong, you fix it and we go again and it's, that's the way it's going to work. Peter, back to you. I know Shot is a family company. Um, yeah. A lot of people from the family work in the company, obviously, still do. Yes. Um, what makes Michael a good fit into the family? Yeah, well, I think that's the key word for that, family. The, that's what we believe in. We're very much pro a family business. Our core values as a business, one of them is we're a family business and we operate in a family way. And that was what hit me from day one on that very first phone call. You know, Michael's kids are running around in the background and it, it just screamed where we were from. It was just much the same as I'd been through as a parent and could understand exactly what was happening. And not only that, um, I'm also a, a bit of a dog nut and um, Michael loves his dogs as well. So between that, we had a conversation about kids and dogs and probably not as much about that. So <laughs> it just sort of showed it was going to work. All right, we are going to get back to the darts now, by the way, because I, I'm going to walk this way to see where the new darts are. They are close here. Because obviously, Michael, what we want to know, that's why we need the darts, it is what has changed and why has it changed? Can you, can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, I don't think much has changed. I know there's a, a lot more grooves on it now, but the, the, middle, the middle groove, the middle set of the dart is still the same as my old darts. But apart from that, it, it's got my stamp on it, but it has to have red on it. Red and black, that's my colours. It's red for settlings and black because it makes me look slim. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. um, no, and then obviously the points, I, I, these, I don't think these are ever going to want the Darcy Sun because that's for me. There's the four Vs on the points, which St. Evans have won four grand finals in a row. Hopefully we're there again in October, then I'll have another one. And it's just personal little touches. And yeah, it all works, the grooves at the back. But because I hold the stem, and only one thing on the darts, moves don't matter to me. We just had a, I had a goal that I couldn't go out as a kid and buy a 200 pound set of darts. So my target now a 500 pound. I wanted a family dart where families are not going to pay the bank for a set of darts. It's, it's simple, it's me, I'm a simple person. And that's why, <laughs> thank you. That's <laughs> <laughs> what it's really not simple, you're fine. Yeah, that, that's something we worked on and that's, that it's just reflecting me as a child and the kids coming up now as well. Please let's go back to you. How long, take us into the world of making a dot, how long does it actually take from the idea to what we have here? Yeah, well it was a, you know, so we started this journey, you know, two years ago from the first conversation and then from there was let's have a look at that and we started to make some prototypes pretty much based on keeping the balance the same as Michael's existing set. You know, that the back of the dart to be the same, the same length and diameter, such that everything was as much the same as we could. And then we sent up um, one of our barrel designers up to, to see Michael and um, worked us through his way through. We drew up um, some barrels, checked those, made, geez, I don't know how many, maybe. Say 40 Yes. <laughs> <laughs> a, a decent number of sets from just, and just kept tweaking. And hey, this yeah, a little tweak here, a little tweak there, and I, I think that makes a difference. And for a, for a top player, you've got to be confident in your gear. You've got to make sure it's right. And from our point of view, well, we were prepared to just keep going until we got it bang on. We just kept tweaking and tweaking until we got it right. And then it was getting that color balance right. To, um, didn't want to go away from the silver dart, but again, just getting that black and red, and to make it flip, flip, flip right, look right, and really feel right as it goes into the ball. All right, and I'm sure you're going to say they are going right because yeah, <laughs> be stupid to say they're not going right, are they? Uh, but you played last weekend the first matches on stage with them. What was your first reaction? Uh, I think I told you, yeah, I didn't want to go. I was 
shit myself. Basically, I just didn't want to go and have 70 average and because my head, the darts are perfect, my flow is perfect. It was just what was going in between the ears, and I went, no, I'll have to go because if I don't go, then I've got to go play pole the next week. If they have a bad time there, then I'm not going to be confident for the match play. But I've been working well with them in practice, been working well, and yeah, I went there. First game, 101. Felt like there was a magnet in tops because I couldn't miss it. And then the next game, 111, I was like, why was he even bothered? He's, I could throw a set of nails if you have to. It's, it's only what's in the ear, behind the ears, it's what works. It's only 10% is your flow, 90% is what you're thinking. Well, by the looks of it and by yeah. confidence, you say yeah. that's going to be many titles. Uh, ladies and yeah. gentlemen, I think this is the official moment where we say Michael Smith is now officially a shot player. <laughs> Which brings us to the uh, sets we have here on the table. There's actually four uh, sets of darts, four different uh, setups basically. Uh, number one is the main one. Achieve, you can find another box. Achieve, Achieve is the match dart Michael plays with. And then we have uh, the Defiant, and the Defiant is the black and red edition of the Michael Smith dart. And then we have two other options. And Peter, this is where you're gonna talk a little bit, I hopefully, uh, because both the Achieve and the Defiant have also been made in a front-loaded uh, version. What's the idea behind that? Well, it's again, and Mike sort of touched on, we wanted to be doing something that clicked for all players rather than just some. And like for us, I, I don't know about other brands, but for us, 60% of our sales are in the front weighted dart. And especially all of us here have an understanding of dart players and what it is. Typically, someone new to the game will, t will start off with a front weighted dart. That's pretty normal. So we needed to have that on the range to make sure we're covering all, all people. So yeah, so we just took took the same, basically, specs of the dart and just shortened it up, added a bit of front weight, slightly pushed the, the grip a little bit different to create a unique push point onto both, and then just balanced it up quite nicely with the right look. And I only have here the uh, four ninety percent sets, obviously, but I'm pretty sure there's more to come. <laughs> well, there's always other things in development. <laughs> but first we're going to try these uh, four sets. Um, I think we've talked enough. I think it's time for you to show us a little bit on how they throw. I need to practice first. That's talked like a true, true dart, but I'm sure. Check it off. See? You thought the little championship was pressure. No, 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 no. no. This is pressure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, see, it's all right. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> Compared to me, yeah. Michael, first of all, welcome and thank you very much for the option to have an interview with you. You're welcome. We have had a lot of questions from our customers and one of the most asked questions is why shot? I knew that was coming. <laughs> Obviously. Uh, every, it's, it's a shock. Everyone thought top three, target, windmill, unicorn. Why would I leave unicorn? Mm -hmm. I think when unicorn um, stopped doing the boards mm -hmm. for PDC. It felt for me like they kind of stood still a bit. They didn't push or market it like now. And then I spoke to Peter at Shot. That was two and a half years ago, and it was like his passion, his drive. He wants to be in the top three, like the big company that everyone uses. And he had so many ideas of the marketing, the pushing, the drive, the passion. He wants to be the, one of the biggest companies out there not only in say, New Zealand or the US, and mm -hmm. he wants to do UK, he wants to do Europe, he wants to be up there, and this was two and a half years ago, so I was ranked number seven maybe, or six, and he spoke to me, he said, well, we think you're the person that could do it, and I was like, listen, I've got two and a half years with Unicorn, I need some convincing, I, I have no plans on leaving, and yeah, he just pitched it to me, and within 10, 15 minutes, I was like, yes, done, deal, sound, sorted, and it's not, it's not everyone's cup of tea that I'm at shot. It, like you say, it's a big shock. Why shot? For me, shot was the perfect option. 
I don't own, I'm a big name in the UK, a big name in Europe. I also want to be a big name in the US. I want to be wherever in the world I want to be a name. I want to be a household for my brand, my, for me. And that's what I wanted. And now we've shot that you can push me in the US, they push me in New Zealand, Australia, and I can help them here. And my desire and shot's desire just clicked and yeah, that's why I chose shot. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So, that was the first one. <laughs> and now I have a bunch of questions. You definitely will play shot darts, not like some other players playing some replicas of a unicorn dart or whatever. It's basically similar to your unicorn dart, but overall it's completely different, isn't it? Yeah, um, if you see on the actual match that I don't know if you can see it, the, the actual middle groove is the same as what I had for Unicorn. So because these two fingers are on the stem, that's on a point, it's only this finger that actually touches the barrel. So as long as that was same, you can you can do whatever you want. It had to be have some red in it for mm -hmm. St. Helens and where I'm from, same as my shirts, I always have black or red. And it had to have that, but then when we first started a dart, it was different and it worked down to this. I think you're seeing on the weekend, mm -hmm. my first time as a shot player and I used the darts and yeah, they went well. Yeah, you mm -hmm. felt very, very confident yeah. on the stage. The scoring power was quite there, but your doubles was, were phenom phenom phenomenal. So yeah, but I, especially I, tops worked so well for you. Yeah, 101, 111 average. And then it was my fault in the, <coughs> in the quarterfinals against Dirk. Mm -hmm. Instead of saying, win this match, I was like, yeah, I'll win the tournament now. <laughs> Get this match and then I've won the tournament. I never took it game by game and there's lessons still to be learned. Even mm -hmm. though I'm world champion, I still got to learn lessons and that's not uh, looked too far ahead and stop being uh, immature like mm -hmm. type thing. So yeah, definitely I'd use them straight away. It's okay. not a replica, it is the real thing. I don't think you'd see all this if it was a replica. And that yeah, that brings happen. us to the next question. We saw you play some different points. Um, as far as I know, they won't be available to buy. It's quite the same with the barrels. There are some laser engravings on them and even flights are a bit different to them that are available to our customers. Yeah, Why? that's for me. Uh, so the points have, if you see on the black darts, it's got the red V. Yeah, yeah. So on the points, it's, uh, it's for me, it's got four Vs. Mm -hmm. And my hometown, St. Helens, they won four in a row. We're going for five now. So we're four grand finals. So if we can get the five, then I'll have five points. That's a personal touch for me. And as for the lasering, the darts you're getting is the new logo with the MBBS with mm -hmm. the two bulls wrapping around, but my actual darts will have the head of my bull. That's also mine and the flights is different. So if someone gets a set of my flights or I actually give them my darts, you know they're genuine because they'll have a different thing on it yeah. all the time. You can't buy them so it's no, a very it, special thing. So. Yeah, so if I give you a set, no one else has it unless mm -hmm. I give someone else and someone else. Yeah, yeah. There's going to be 100,000 whatever sets sold. Mm. and maybe 10 people I don't have the set that I actually use. It's the exact same dart, just a, it's a laser on the goal point and it's a different um, mm -hmm. stamp. Okay. Um, how many hours per day do you practice? Uh, this year, uh, maybe an hour. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I I don't, I don't, literally, I've had no time and I think you've seen that I'm in performance. But from starting all the way up till January now, it was always four or five hours a day. I always put four in, like I drop the kids off at school, mm -hmm. do four hours, pick the kids back up, and then if we had time, like when the kids went to bed at nine o'clock, I'd go and put another hour or two hours in, so it could be four, five, or six hours a day. Amazing. Then like <laughs> now, because I've got these darts, I've put back in the three, four hours a day now, mm -hmm. leading up to the time that's coming. Okay. Um, of course, you have your nickname, Bully Boy, and there are a lot of rumors about a real um, bull. A Ferdinand. Uh, yeah, for, <laughs> for example, um, do you already have one or is no, it still yet. planned? Or I got the name from working on a cow farm, so okay. uh, they just got it from there. But I said if I win the world, I'm going to get a bull from the front field so that you couldn't come to my house and not see one. But in the front field we had horses. Now the horses have gone now, the, the person who rented the field, she took the horses, she's gone to a different field, to Cumbia, I think, which is like five hours from where I'm from. Mm -hmm. So uh, now I can get the field ready. I can hopefully build a barn, so hopefully when I go to the world champions, ne world champion next year, defending champion, then we can do like promos with the bull and stuff, and yeah, it'd be cool. I just, be I, just I, I just love animals. If you come to mine, I've got over 150 birds, like chickens, turkeys, ducks, yeah, geese, yeah. everything. Well, with five dogs, and hopefully <laughs> I only, a I only own two cats and <laughs> a dog, uh, so I you got, definitely have a lot more yeah, than I've got, got five dogs. <laughs> 
Um, which points do you use? We already discussed, but which lengths do they have? I, th I think <laughs> minus 35 mil, I think. Out of barrel or full length? No, out of barrel, I push okay. it up. So I, I've never mm. measured it. Maybe yeah. it's 32, maybe off 30, I'm not so, sure, but it's uh, an actual 35 mil point. So a bit longer than the usual players using, I would say. No, I think it's a bit shorter. Shorter? Uh, yeah, if, uh, I'd have to get my darts out of the back room yeah, and then yeah. you can measure it and put it online, but yeah. Maybe, do you know about, about 30 okay. mil? I think so. Um, you have had a tough time with losing finals. Um, <laughs> it's really hard to see you on TV. I watch a lot of um, finals there as well. And I was really sad when you didn't made it um, to the title. Um, what was your motivation or what inspires you to get back and back all the time and just fighting and fighting until you get this one big final and maybe you can give some um, tips or hints for other players how you can yeah improve or how you can work with such um, situations uh, a champion is not a champion until he wins something there's a lot of documentaries out there like a michael jordan when he missed 3,000 free throws so many uh, one point shots then he makes one and then he starts winning his titles and there's so many, a champion doesn't win his first event. You've got to keep working hard. My biggest motivation was my kids. I can't show my kids that because I've lost, I'm going to quit. I'm not a quitter and I don't want my kids to be. So I had to drag myself up, get back up, get back practicing and show my kids to work hard. Because after the world final against Peter last year, mm -hmm. I was done. I was ready for quitting. <laughs> I didn't want to play anymore. I was done. I'd, it's one of them, it's never going to happen. This is the, I think it was the sixth major at the time or the fifth. It's like, it's never going to happen. I'm sick of it now, it's doing me head in. And then literally uh, the day after, I was like, stop being a girl, just get on with it. And then I lost in the UK Open final. It's like, it happens. Lost the European final. <laughs> I don't know. And then the Grand Slam come around. I was like, this is, apart from the world, this is my favourite event. It's a good for, it's a short format. I've always won, I think for the last five or six years, I've won the group always finished top and then I think I've made the quarters of semis for the last mm. five years as well. So I've been 15, 13 down to Joe. I was like, if I win this, I'll win this event. So I think I went 12, 11, no, 15, 11, 15 to win the last three to win the match. And then, yeah, that was it. And I, I beat Barner and then I beat, had my chance against Nathan. And thankfully enough, Nathan played in that final the way I'd been playing finals <laughs> and he let me in. And then the world champs was like, this is the third time now. It's third time, third time in five years. You can't keep wasting these chances. <laughs> I sh I'm not going to say I should have won the the, mm. pre the previous year against Peter. I I could have won, but I never had a chance, so I'll never say I should have. I said this is the one. This mm. is where this is where you make your name. You win. This could be the only chance you get to be a world champion. You might never make another final, but this could be the only chance again to yeah. be world number one. And I could do both in the same day. And it was like, you know what? Just kick ass and get on with it. And <laughs> yeah, I did that. Okay, so. When you only have one advice for somebody who struggles with his performance or just um, losing important matches, what would your advice uh, be to him? Just look at my life. <laughs> just go online and watch my montages of from then and now. It's, you don't quit. Like, I've been guilty if you watch my games in the past where it's a race to, I don't know, 10 and I'm 7 1 down. I just start throwing my darts where I can't be asked. I want to get off stage. I don't want to play anymore. But now I fight and he becomes seven two, I break him to go seven three, then I can all throw seven four, then he starts thinking then. I'm only one break behind yeah. and I'm seven six then, because I'll hold me throw. He's straight back in the match. It's I know it sounds a lot when you've got to win six legs, mm -hmm. but you need to break him twice mm -hmm. and if it's in his head straight away then and he starts thinking your thoughts six legs ago mm -hmm. were holy crap, I'm gonna get beat to you. Yeah. And that's what it is, you just don't quit and as much as it hurts losing there's always that thing at the end of the road is mm. one door slams, another one's going to open. And I'm a prime example. I had nine shooting me first. <laughs> and then I managed to go on to win um, the Grand Slam, the Worlds and Bahrain with three tournaments on the spin. So it happens. Okay. I'm just searching your... Achieve. Obviously, I think it's uh, over there. Yeah. <laughs> um, a lot of people asking me, how do you actually hold your darts? So what's uh, your grip on uh, the barrel in general? I don't hold the barrel. <laughs> <laughs> so I just would give you some. And if you could just hold them right in front of the yeah, lens. Uh, I'm just looking if it's working. I think I said before on the thing... Come, come, come closer. That grip here in the middle. 
Yep. That's yep. the exact same grip what I was on about before. So let me just fix that, it does me head in. A bit yeah. <laughs> no, it just does me head in when they're flat. Mm -hmm. So I actually hold the flight, uh, hold the stem here. That finger rests on that grip. That's the grip that's been on every dart I've had. And then it's there. So I only have one finger actually on the barrel. And it's just up and down. And I think these are the last two to leave and that gives me that lift in the air like this and then sits up nice in the board for me. So yeah. literally that's all it is. It's just, I don't know if you can see on the camera perfect though. Yeah, yeah perfect. That's and you're still using 24 grams. Yeah. Um, why 24 gram? Did you try different weights in the past? Uh, or yeah. Was it ever uh, the perfect weight for you? From 17 to 23, I played with 22 gram uh, Gary Anderson Dream Boys with Data Dart. Mm -hmm. And then when I switched with Unicorn on the 2024, 2024, 2014 World, um, yeah, they were 22s as well. And then my dart started to drop a lot. I don't know if it was just I wasn't throwing right. It, that was after about three years of that. It just started to go low and low and low. And it felt like I was having to force. I was hurting my shoulder a lot, my elbow. And uh, I broke my hands, broke my wrist when I was 19. So I get a lot of pain if I have to force things. So I said, no, I'll try a 24. It, it's only two grams, but it might just, mm -hmm. I don't have to force it as much. Instantly straight away, I was hitting the top wire, it was going in. I wasn't hitting the bottom wire and I didn't have to switch, I didn't have to force and just stuck with 24. And I think my unicorn darts, if I weigh them now, they're probably in the 22s now anyway. I've used them that much. But yeah, we now change the shot with 24, maybe once every three months or once every two months, I'll change to a new set then and keep going. Yeah. Um, when we're talking about points, there are new regular Regu uh, new rules on the PTC circuit for points. Um, as you play right now, some laser attached points um, with a bit more board grip. Um, you have had a lot of issues with the old Unicom board and bouncers and so on. on what do you think uh, uh, can this it? affect in yeah in the future? No, because on um, on Saturday when I was getting ready to play Keen Baller, the tournament director Glenn Furlow came over and I want your darts, so I give him my darts put his finger down the point and I'll show you in a minute in my darts in the other room there's actually no grip it's okay. just because it's a laser there's nothing there it's smooth they still come out you don't have to force out the board they slide okay. out the board so it's not like a diamond pro point no. for example it's just you, an optical thing you touch it and it's still the same barrel it's still a gold barrel it's just like like a stamped picture it's not mm. rough it's not raised it's not going to rip the board apart mm. I'll show you in a minute my darts are literally mm. in the other room and you can test it yourself you literally run your finger there's no lumps, bumps, or cuts or anything. It's just a standard, normal goal point. Okay, uh, I really think you are very confident with your new shot darts, um, as I've seen on TV. Um, was it a big mental thing for you to change the equipment, or did you say, okay, I put these darts and I feel basically the same with my unicorn darts, and I know it's working? Uh, no, I didn't want to go this weekend. I was actually scared to go. First time I've ever been scared of playing darts. I played Van Gogh and I played Price in finals. And I'm never, I'm more confident than ever. But this weekend I was scared. I didn't want to go embarrass myself. I didn't want to have like a 70 average get beat. Think that I've made the biggest mistake of my life. I said, no, what? I'm, I don't need a specific dart. I can throw anything that I want. Yes, I feel comfy. Like mentally, I feel comfortable in my head with my older darts. But that's because I've changed. And then when I was on that stage. It just felt like I was playing with old darts. It felt like I'd had these darts since the day I started playing. And I think that because we've had two years working on them, I started from something ridiculous, like so far-fetched of a dart that I wanted. And we carried, I must have 50 sets we've designed and we've come down to this one. So for me, it's like playing and basic, it's me. And it's because we've had two years working on it, it's perfect. The balance is right, they, leave, they go cut through the air right. And because I hold the stem, every set that I've had, because I hold the stem, they kick off to the left, the right, they'd, ne they'd go in like this. And it wasn't for me, but that one is literally perfect. And mm -hmm. it, the only biggest problem for me was my, like you said, my mental side of it. I was like, no, well, just get on with it. Just, okay. You're the best player in the world, I mean, just get on with it. And <laughs> yeah, he just went in. Yeah, Peter from Shot told me that you really wanted to do something with them, not just getting a dart. Um, you wanted to um, put more into it. You wanted to design um, the barrel and the packaging with um, the team of shot. Um, when we're just looking into the packaging, Peter told me there are some small Easter eggs um, about your life. For example, um, well, maybe you could uh, um, yes. use some packaging. Uh, and you maybe one. could explain what is on the back. Yeah, because obviously that's Ferdinand, the bull that I want. So I'll come close if you want. Yeah. There's a bull, but then if you look on the back here, 
when I won, I had a bet with my mum, so I, I don't know if you can see that, but it was yeah, okay. So when, it, when I had a bet with my mum the, for the Youth Worlds before I played Vicky Evans, I always wanted a dog, <laughs> and because I still lived at home, she was like, we're not having a dog, we're not having a dog. She went, please, please, please. She went, no. I said, right, if I win the Youth Worlds, can I get a dog? She went, yeah. <laughs> so I won the Youth Worlds and I went out and bought my first pet, which was Orca, and he's a Siberian Husker. Mm -hmm. So that's why now he's on the back of the case. It's, it's why the picture of the wolf. What a great memory and a great motivation. My favorite animal is a wolf. Mm -hmm. So I, it's, that's what I see myself. I see myself as like a loner. Like I like, I like to be on my own when I'm traveling. I don't like people talking too much because I'm not a very good talker. And it's like, ah, it's simple things, but the only thing that I, I wanted to input on was the name of the darts. Mm -hmm. Every different set was with a name of one of my dogs. So maybe in a future future dart they will be, but there's little different things on there. That's yeah, it's my life. It's just mm -hmm. had to be. And then, like I say, it's, there's a pub on the back, which mm -hmm. my family all own pubs. There's a dog. There's some with a bull. Yeah, it's had to be. Had to be me. And the main playing dart, the main focus for that was. I remember going to the shop as a kid, and it was, I think it was called Renium. It was like hundred pound for a set, and it was like literally, it was. For me, I ended up walking away with like a 17 pound set that's all we could afford. There was no way back then when I was 14, I could afford a 100 pound set. So with these, we kept it simple. We only takes, I think, a minute and 10 seconds to make on the machine. It keeps the cost down. It, anyone can go in the shop and buy them. It's not going to be stupidly priced. It's going to be mm -hmm. uh, probably same as the unicorn and my darts, but if not cheaper. And that's what I wanted. I wanted to be a family, a family sport, a family thing where families can go out and buy my stuff and they don't have to break the bank to buy it. Um, at the moment, we have a lot of different products from you coming out right now. Is there something already planned, something like a limited dart, which we didn't got at this launch, so maybe a World Champion Edition or whatever? Maybe, you know maybe, <laughs> maybe just before the Worlds or maybe just after, I don't know. Um, for now, this was the big thing, is getting it all out and ready. I know it's only released, I think, 13th of July. Mm -hmm. But exactly. I don't want uh, to release these and get used to them and then have to think about an, a different design. That's something you'd have to ask Peter and Shot, that, mm -hmm. the, the limited edition that's on there. If you want to make it, make it how you want. But for me again, if they do make one, I want it as a package where maybe then the limited edition, you'll get my my stamp, my points and my flights then, mm -hmm. and then it's something special. Yeah. But in my head, I don't think there's nothing planned. Maybe before the world's after. We will see. <laughs> Thank you very much no, for welcome. the interview. Very nice talk to you. You too. And thank you much for your time and all the best for the upcoming tournaments. Thank you so much. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you.